Um, this morning's devotional is titled Trust in the Lord. Um, and I'm really beginning to treasure just what the Lord wants to reveal. And I pray my Devo blesses you in some way. Um, <clears throat> for the past couple of months, I've been in a real struggle that my heart has been so overwhelmed. I could not see a real purpose or plan for where the Lord has me in my life questioning everything and not trusting what the plans are for me. Um, it had affected all those around me, especially Holy Spirit that dwells within me. Um, <clears throat> what I've been feeling is a godly sorrow for willingly choosing to sin. Holy Spirit had to place this on my heart so I would come to a place of trust in him and not of the things of my old self. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Psalm 13, 2. Uh, moments where I could have been a blessing to others, but I chose to walk differently. A choice that not only was painful, but has been sorrowful. This was the only way to get my attention because I know and the Lord knows that this is not where I want to be anymore. In the same way, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. Isaiah 66, 9. I read of a story of a gardener who was tending his garden one day and observed a butterfly struggling to break free of its cocoon. The gardener watched in amazement as the delicate creature struggled violently to work its way out of its constraining space. The entire cocoon shook and trembled with the butterfly's effort to emerge. This struggle went on for what seemed like an eternity to the concerned gardener. <clears throat> Eventually, the gardener became so distraught over the butterfly's wrestling to break free that he lost patience and decided to help the process along. He went into the house and obtained a pair of scissors, returned to the garden, and cut a larger opening in the wall of the cocoon, allowing the butterfly to tumble out onto the ground. What the well-meaning gardener did was he did not realize the struggle as a part of the transformation process. In the cocoon, the young butterfly's wings are engorged with fluid, and the struggle to emerge from the, cocoon's force, the cocoon forces the fluid out of the wings and into the young creature's body, where it can be absorbed and processed. Deprived of part of its transformative process, this particular butterfly's wings remain fluid-filled, and it was never able to fly. The gardener watched in despair as the butterfly slowly died, lying on the ground in the garden. In our lives, individually and together, metamorphosis comes as part of a process that involves joy and sorrow, pain and freedom. When we try to speed up or slow things down, we are denying ourselves the very thing that the Lord is trying to do in our lives. It is a necessary process that can only be determined by the Lord and the Lord only. And yes, trust in the Lord is a process which involves struggle, dying to self, repenting, changing, growing, and ultimately transforming. It is not always easy. However, when you emerge, you spread your wings and you begin to fly. You will always have a greater appreciation for who you are and what God has called you to become. Do I always understand the process? No, I don't. I was not meant to understand everything. That's the Lord's job. My job is to be so immersed in the word that I can trust every part of my life unfolding before my eyes because I have assurance that it is written and it is so. The Lord must test us each to see how we handle ourselves. If you are having trouble trusting 
He will put you in circumstances that only he can deliver you from and not of your doing. Yeah. I say this because these past few months I have let my anger get the best of me. In situations that I should have asked the Lord to reveal the root of my problem and have been willing to expose the dark, messy places in my heart. To look up and to cry out and to pray that it be replaced with truth and love and hope so that I can face daily struggles and to walk joyfully. I, I chose to hold on to the anger, you know? Um, replacing it with truth, this is what it means to be equipped every day, to be able to spread our wings and fly and not be stagnant in our spiritual growth. So how can we put on our new selves to trust the Lord? First, we must know that he is good. I don't believe anyone here doubts his power or authority. I think when his goodness gets questioned is when we rely on our feelings instead of truth and what the word says. And I know I have been a culprit of this far too many times um, of not relying on his truth. His goodness in, has been evident since the beginning of creation. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day, Genesis 131. The world is full of brokenness and sin, which broke the goodness of God's design. Thankfully, in trusting the Lord's plans and his goodness, he will rid the world of sin. Here is another question. Is the Lord good to me? Scripture tells us in Romans 8, 28, and we know in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I think when we rely on our, fresh, our flesh for answers, the answers will always come back. How and why? Whereas when we rely on Holy Spirit that dwells within us, he speaks comfort, love, and reassurance, just like he did this morning to me. I was worried about being vulnerable and sharing my struggle. And Holy Spirit whispered, where there is struggle, there is growth. I instantly was able to keep writing to keep my mind focused on what Holy Spirit says and not what my flesh wanted to say. Lastly, do I trust the Lord? The word says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understandings. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your, your, straight, your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. When we are solid in who we are and whose we are, we can answer this question with a resounding yes. Because we have replaced the old feelings with God's truth. This one act or choice will anchor our souls to trusting the Lord because he will keep you in perfect peace. Those who love, whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. Thank you. Good.